Hi, my name is Lars Sönström. We're over here at Italisys talking to delegates, present, uh, presenters, keynote speakers, and we got these awesome demos going on. Uh, Petros uh, Stavroulakis from the University of Nottingham is you're demoing here this setup to do measurements, but we do, we're doing it AI style, right? Yes. Could you explain a little bit what we're looking at right now? So this is an uh, AI enhanced uh, 3D measurement uh, kit we've put together. It combines three measurement uh, methods, uh, photogrammetry, fringe projection, and deflectometry. And it depicts the ability to um, measure three uh, different materials at the same time, using artificial intelligence to recognize those materials. Awesome, so we don't need to change the setup of our measurement? Uh Not anymore. So the camera will be able to understand whether you've got something that is a polymer, let's say, or a metal or a carbon fiber object, and automatically change the measurement equipment to uh, optimize on that measurement sounds a difficult process so how do you learn the the tech to to recognize tho those different materials because they could look pretty much the same in the object that they're shaped in currently right yeah definitely so you could have uh, two the same o similar objects with different materials uh, you would need to train the network to recognize a particular object uh, that's uh, using a priori data or photographs or anything you might have that is of that object uh, with a specific camera and a specific uh, lighting condition. So that would increase your probability to recognize it. Uh, what we've done here is we've enclosed the whole box and we've cr created a demo just with the light of the projector. And uh, you would be able to extend this to m multiple materials in the future, but you would need a lot more data. But are you still, you're depending on uh, lighting situations or uh, contour in the, in the background? for the, the sensors to pick it up? Yes, uh, at the moment we've uh, found that there are some uh, conditions which restrict this technology, uh, which is uh, mainly uh, uh, sp spurious lighting conditions, so it would have to be controlled uh, in, a, in a controlled environment for the moment. But we hope with uh, extending the data we've got, because at the moment we've trained it with data from a specific particular light source, we'll be able to make that less sensitive. Awesome, and, and if we even uh, elaborate a little bit on where we could uh, put this technology for what kind of sectors mm -hmm. it could really mean a difference? Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, you could use it in manufacturing is what our uh, primary target is. And you could use it into uh, areas which require frequent change of materials. So for this particular one, you, if something was running in aluminum and then had to change with steel and had to uh, um, still measurement, uh, need a 3D measurement, you would be able to not uh, care about the uh, 3D uh, measurement system at all because it would automatically recognize the material and swap its parameters to optimize that measurement. That's going to save a lot of time and money, I guess, if yeah. we uh, implement the systems. But what are like the, the boundaries? Why? why uh, because if I look at traditional manufacturing companies, a lot of them still run on traditional methods as well. What's mm -hmm. stopping them, do you think, to implement uh, great research and, and, and systems like this? Well, Lars, uh, as you know, change is already uh, re really hard in general. So you, you need to convince people, first of all, that it's, it's in their benefit. Then they would need to find the cost to change their systems. So I think people are just getting to, uh, to grips with the idea of what AI can do. And in order to get the budget, in order to be able to go do the long-term cost savings that this would offer. Um, yes, you're right, uh, we, we need to convince people and uh, hopefully by making demos like this that work in real time, people are more and more uh, accustomed to the idea that they need to change to save more money and become more productive. So uh, at the University of, uh, of Nottingham you're working on, on uh, all different kinds of, uh, of, of research and, mm -hmm. uh, and these uh, systems. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you think this would be ready to, to release it into? Like corporate setting? Or uh, we would need to run uh, a lot of uh, case studies to be able to be sure that we're operating in a really high percentage of, of uh, accuracy because we don't want to release something that's premature. Mm -hmm. We're just showing the, the potential for this technology. The real data crunching will come afterwards where companies would pick this idea up and try to apply it in, uh, in anger as in yeah. Into the company, into You're the looking for companies industry. to do some pilots with. Yes, uh, we're always this we're always interested. Yeah. We're always <laughs> interested in people if they want to uh, uh, come and collaborate with us. Yeah, uh, we're open to that. So uh, we we are open to collaboration with any kind of person that needs a case study uh, done. Yeah, especially three D printing in three uh, D printing industry, which we know that will really uh, like this uh, kind of idea because they have lots of materials they need to uh, measure and calibrate their systems with, but they don't necessarily have one. 3D measurement technique out there that could do everything. So uh, with incorporating artificial intelligence, you'll be able to leverage that knowledge 
to, to measure uh, ah. different materials. And technology will really helping us to uh, make our processes much more efficient. Uh, yes, again. yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I believe that uh, artificial intelligence is the future, but uh, we need to be careful. So we need to be, uh, when we're talking about manufacturing, especially high value manufacturing, uh, aerospace and companies like that, they have to have the confidence as well that uh, there won't be any errors in their That's production right. process. Yeah. Well, Petros uh, Stavroulakis from the University of Nottingham, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to dive into this demo uh, over here at, uh, at, in uh, Atelisys. Uh, if you want to join us for any of the conferences, please check out the website. We'll also have other content available for you there. Uh, I've did interviews with all these awesome presenters and we'll make sure to get the content right to you. Thank you for watching. <laughs>